Hello and welcome back to my channel. So today's video I have just filmed this look. It's just using all my favourite products that I've been using for ages. Some of them are new but most of them I have been loving for a very very long time. Guys don't forget to give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel because I'll be putting up new videos and yeah. Alrighty, let's just get right into it. So I'm going to start with my primers. I use three together. These are my like my favorite combo to use. Um, first, I'm taking the Lancome. What is this called? La Base Pro Pore Eraser. It's just a primer that fills in your pores, and you only want to use it on the areas where you have large pores. So it's quite thick. I like to squeeze out a little bit and just rub it into my cheeks and the side of my nose, like so, and also on my chin. Sorry if I'm looking in different directions, I've just got a few mirrors to try and see what I'm doing. With today's look, I don't really know where I'm going with it. I'm just going to pull out all my favourite products I know I love to use and we'll create a makeup look and we'll see what happens, but it'll be good because it's all my favourites, so they shouldn't let me down today. Next I'm going to take this Revlon Photo Ready Primer. This is also amazing, it smooths out the skin. It's great for photography and a little bit goes a long way. It's great at also mattifying the skin without drying it out. So I just apply most of this on the outside of the face first. Anywhere where I didn't really apply that pore feeling primer. So the next and final step I will use for primer is the Nivea Men's Sensitive Aftershave Balm. I don't like to use it as a primer on its own just because it broke me out but when I've got primers underneath and put this over the top it works really well like it just I don't know because it's almost got like a wet tacky base it makes the um, foundation almost grip to your skin better and then I just like to pat it once I've smoothed it out everywhere so that's my primers done now I'm moving on to foundation my all-time favorite foundation has to be Estee Lauder Double Wear. Literally, like when you've got nine bottles of it is when you know it's your favorite foundation. They're not all the same shade. Like I've got like maybe two or three backups of colors I use all the time. And then the rest are like colors when I'm fake tan, really pale. And then when I just get that color in summer. I've recently also discovered this foundation from Bobbi Brown. It's the Long Wear Even Finish Foundation and I'm in the shade 2.5 Warm Sand. So I will be mixing this in with my trusty Double Wear in Rattan and I'll mix these two together and then I'll put them on my face. I don't know why they work so well together but they do. I've been using it recently. So I'm just going to take the Bobbi Brown foundation first and I'm just going to do two pumps onto the back of my hand. And then I'm going to take the Rattan from Double Wear and I use just the MAC foundation um, pumps on my foundations and I'm just going to do three pumps of this. So two of Bobbi Brown and three of Estee Lauder. Now to blend it all out, I'm just mixing it on the back of my hand with my finger. You know what, I might even mix one pump of bone from Estee Lauder as well just because I feel like a little bit paler than I normally am today so I'll just do one and a half that turned out to be pumps of that you can see the shade difference so I'll just mix that in lighten it up just a little bit so it's all over the back of my hand I'm just gonna space it out everywhere no real technique with this for me I'm just literally putting it on my face Taking my trusty beauty blender that has been hacked at. <laughs> I love this guy. I'm just picking up some of the product off my hand and we're just going to blend this out everywhere. Now this may look like I'm being a bit rough on my skin but I promise I'm not. You just sort of really press it into the skin. We're just pouncing this everywhere. I'm sorry if I'm not looking into the camera, it's just because my mirrors are in all different angles and I need to see obviously what I'm doing. I can't see what I look like <laughs> in the camera because we all know what happens when I don't look in a mirror and I do my makeup. If any of you have watched my no mirror makeup challenge, it doesn't turn out that great. Don't forget the ears because if you're like me and just get when you get flushed, anxious or just hot, I show through on my ears and no one wants like red ears. 
So that's the foundation done now. Um, it feels really lightweight. Double wear is really good because it sets itself. So for concealer, I'm using the Maybelline uh, Fit Me Concealer. I've got the shade 10 Light here. I also use the shade 20 Sand, I think it is. And this concealer is just bomb. It literally gives you so much coverage. It's so thin, it doesn't crease in any lines. Yeah, it's just awesome. Taking it just down the center of my nose. And up through the brow and onto the forehead. A little bit on the lip and the chin. Oops. Again, I'm just taking the Beauty Blender to blend all this out. Just looking up and having my head tilted down a bit to get right under the eye. I do some on the eyelid just to cancel out any colour on my eyelid for when I do my eyeshadow. It sort of works as a base. To concept, to concept, <laughs> to set my concealer, I'm taking my Napoleon Purdue's Camera Finish Foundation Powder in the shade N2 under my eyes. So I just take this Real Techniques brush, it is a setting brush, there you go. And I just sort of pick up the product in the pan and press it under my eyes. I do pressing motions first because I don't want to disturb any of the product. And I only use this shade around my eyes, not anywhere else on my face. So after I've used that powder, I just go in with my Australis Banana Powder just to brighten up everything a little bit more. Taking the same brush and using padding motions all under the eye and I just go over that pink shade. We'll brighten it up a little bit more using this shade instead of correcting. And this shade I can also take on the other areas I use concealer. So we'll take a little bit on the center of the forehead, down the bridge of the nose, Cupid's bow, and also the chin. And that's it for setting the concealer. Now to set the rest of my face, it's uh, Napoleon Purdue's Camera Finish Foundation Powder 2. And this shade is G4. So I just use this on the outer perimeters of my face, so my forehead. This powder's got a lot more warmth to it, so it really brings the warmth back into my skin. I try and do patting motions first. To tr I just don't want to disturb any of the product, you know gives you more coverage as well when you pat it into the skin. Get it into the sides of the nose. All right, so the next step I'm going to do is my eyebrows. Now, obviously, because I dye my hair black, my eyebrows aren't that dark, so they always just look silly on my face to me. Um, I used to be obsessed with the Napoleon Purdue Gel um, China Doll Eyeliner in Tao. Um, but now that I am more on the black side, I need something darker and I've discovered the Chi Chi black in my shades in black brown But it's a brow pomade and this is really good like you get a lot of product in here you get two grams of product and a Tiny bit of this goes a long way like a tiny bit You still get a lot of product in the Napoleon one as well But I just find this shade matches better with me and because it's such a thinner Glossier consistency with this, but it does set but when you're first using it, it's quite um, Not runny, but very smooth to use it just goes on really easy and more quick um, so yeah, I love this product and it's a lot cheaper than the Napoleon one as well, which I'm all for too. So I just use a little angled brush. This is just one that I used through college doing makeup. It's called Angle Liner Definer 06. I don't know where you buy these from or anything. Um, it's a natural hair brush. So yeah, I'm just going to draw them on. There's no specific way I really do them. I just tap lightly into the pot and start from underneath my brows, do the tail, and then work my way in. If you guys want any sort of brow tutorial, let me know. I do them different, and I get different styles with my eyebrows too, so um, they don't always turn out the same every time I do them. So we'll see what sort of shape I get today, hey? And now my eyebrows are done. Now don't stress if they're not exactly the same. They're meant to be sisters, so 
don't stress they're not identical sisters they're not twins they're just sisters so now i've got my eyebrows on do look a bit funny because my eyeballs are naked so we're gonna go on to eyeshadow now now my all-time favorite transition color is by napoleon purtis now i was saying this color wrong in all my previous videos because i'm but the color's called orange sherbet not sorbet it's like a pale orange color it's really pretty um, I don't know why I love it so much, I just do. It works really well with me and my eye colour and yeah. So I just take a fluffy brush like this guy, swirl it around. Don't really need to worry about tapping off the excess with this because it's a really light shade. And I just buff it into the crease. Not too precise with this colour, just windscreen wiper motions backwards and forwards. Preferably try and blow it out a little bit to the outer crease because it is your transition colour so you want all your other shades to fade into this colour. Now that colour is blown out all through my crease, I'm going to take one of my favourite palettes. It's the Too Faced Natural Matte Palette. Um, it's well loved. You're probably going to see the colours. I'm nearly hitting can on some of them. I'm just going to take the colour Honey Butter. It's this colour right down here. And I'm just going to, again, put that sort of on the lid and in the crease with the same brush that we used. Next, I'm taking Chocolate Cookie, the colour right next to Honey Butter. And we're just going to add this more into the lower crease and the outer edge. So I like to pat the colour on the outer edge just here like so and then just slowly start to bring it in. You Holding the very end of the brush gives you a lighter hand of application too. Whereas if you hold right up here, you're going to get a more dense, controlled application. But at the moment I just want light strokes so using the very end of the brush works better for me with this step here. Just to get a little bit more of a blend, I take that same setting brush we used to set the concealer and I just do this on the very outer edge and underneath and I just like to do this step because I feel like it blends it into the skin a bit better. Now I'm going to take another one of my favourite Too Faced eyeshadow palettes and this is the Peanut Butter and Jelly palette. It smells so good, yummy and I'm just going to take the shade Nuts About You down here. It's just a very orangey color orangey brownie red color and i'm just going to put this in my lower crease just to give my eye a little bit more warmth now i'm taking another one of my favorite glitter products to use on the eyes it's again by revlon and they are the photo ready eye arts these are really cool i don't ever really use the cream shadow side i only use the glitter side and this is in the shade Topaz Twinkle. So I'm just going to take a little bit of this glitter shade and just put it on. Just can you sort of see where I've got like that little bit of a light shadow peeking through? It's where I'm going to place this gold glitter. So once I've got the glitter on, I just take something. This just happens to be a picture of some pictures of me and my boyfriend from years ago um, and I'm just going to use this to fan out the glitter to dry it. This is the only thing I don't like about this product is that it takes ages to dry. Alrighty, so I've gone ahead and done my mascara for my top lashes. I just used Lash Princess by Essence, my all-time fave. Again, we're using my favourites and now we're going to stick on some lashes. You really want to wait until the glue gets really tacky on the lashes. You don't want to apply them straight away while they're wet. So I wait at least 30 seconds to even a minute, depending on what glue I'm using, until I pop them on. Otherwise they will slip and slide and you want them to sort of just stick as soon as you put them down. Otherwise they're just so hard to put on. <laughs> Thank you. 
While I'm waiting for the other glue to dry on the other lash quickly, I'm just going to do a little bit of contouring on my cheeks using the Hula Benefit uh, bronzer. Just on a little angled brush here. It's, you know, past time, multitasking. So I just like to go straight from where my hairline starts here and blend it up through the ear. Um, and then I don't like to bring it down any further than right here. You can sort of see the shadow where you want to apply it. Make sure that with your contour you're always blending upwards not downwards because you want to lift the face. If you blend downwards you're going to draw the face down and we want everything to be lifted. Alright now we're going to stick the other lash on. <laughs> I'm just going to apply some bronzer to the forehead, just into the hairline. I like to do this step because I feel like it shrinks my forehead down a bit and it also warms up the perimeter of my face. Just a little bit along the sides of the nose, a little bit under my chin. And that's it for the contouring side of things. I'm just going to take some of my Essence Make Me Brow Eyebrow Gel Mascara in the dark shade. I love this. It's almost like the Benefit Give Me Brow. It's got like little fibers in there. No idea if you'll be able to see that. But this is just awesome. It thickens up the eyebrows. And it's really good at setting them in place too. And it's only like $5. So... Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Alrighty, so the eyebrows are set. They ain't going nowhere. Just going to put a little bit of bronzer on now. It's the Napoleon Pettis I Work Up Like This bronzer. I love this guy. Like I've said in previous videos, I think it may be limited edition. Sorry about that. Um, but there's probably other products that are really similar I might come across that I could recommend you guys in the future. But just lightly dusting this over the contour. It's just got more of a golden, not orange, but just warmness to it rather than the cool-ish sort of undertone. Now just to sharpen up my contour a little bit, I'm just taking this new By Nature contour palette. Um, this has become this is a new favourite for me. Um, I love that it comes with a giant mirror and then you've got your highlight, bronzing and contouring shade. That shade's a little bit too cool for me, but I do use it sometimes. But I'm just gonna take the yellow pale shade in here and just gonna use this to carve underneath the contour. Not doing any baking, just literally running this powder right underneath that contour. For blusher, I'm taking another one of my good old faves. It's Ginger Pop by Clinique. It's a pop blush. They're really cool. They're like little flowers. And I'm just going to run my brush in this, tap off the excess, and apply this to my cheeks. Then taking the powder brush again and just powdering over, well not powdering, sort of like pressing it into the skin and blending it into the skin a bit better. Now for highlighter, my favorite part. Alrighty, so I'm going to use three, and they're my three favorites. One of my first highlighters, I think it is actually my first one I ever got, is Soft and Gentle from MAC. It's even the old packaging. They come in the new packaging like this now, but this is the old packaging. It lasts a very long time. Sorry, I'm just pulling products out of my drawer. And so I'm going to apply this first. And I'm just going to apply it dry first, just on the highest points of my cheek right there. And there, middle of my nose, just at the end, a little bit down the center, Cupid's bow. And then just spread that out a little bit more, a little bit above the eyebrow. And that's all for soft and gentle because I'm layering them I only want to be using a little bit at a time. I'm going to take a Champagne Pop by Jaclyn Hill and Becca Cosmetics. It's just a beautiful golden champagne colour and I'm going to use this one wet. So what I'm going to do is with my MAC Fix Plus I'm just going to spray this on the end of my brush and pick up just like one swipe because this is very pigmented so just one swipe like that and I'm going to 
pat this over the top of both cheeks. This is going to be enough for both. This highlight is going to be very intense today. Don't ask me why, I just feel like doing it. And this gives it a very intense sort of pop when you wet it. A little bit around here. Nose, cupid's bow, center of the face. And that's what I do with the champagne pop. So it just gives it a bit more of a warm, warm sort of glow. And then to finish it all off, I'm going to add Mary Lou by The Balm on top. It's just like a white, a little bit of a champagne-y gold color. I'm taking it on a fan brush, swelling my brush, tapping it off, and just doing that over the top. Now we're really glowing. It's like everything to me now. It's my favorite part of putting on my makeup. That's it for the face, the highlighting, the eyes. I'm going to set everything with my Max Fix Plus. So I do like to use quite a lot of this just because I feel like it sets the powder down back to skin. So I'll give this a second to dry down. Now we're moving on to lips. I'm going to take my favorite lip liner and this is a new discovery for me. I found it about a couple months ago and I've nearly finished my first one, like literally that's all I've got left. And it's Sienna by Revlon. And I'm just going to apply this all over my lips. I probably will run out, but it's okay because I've got a backup. Now for lipstick, I literally have about five or six MAC lipsticks that are my all-time favorites. But today I have chosen Velvet Teddy as the winner. I'm going to put this over the lip liner. It's just going to lighten it up and give it more of a pinky undertone. <laughs> Oh, and last but not least, before I forget, I'm just taking my peanut butter palette again and using this white shade up here. And I'm just going to apply this on my inner corner as a bit of a highlight. Alright, so this is a finished look. I used all of my favourite products that I love to use doing a glam makeup. I hope you guys enjoyed this look and gives you some ideas of looks that you'd like to do for yourself. Um, the glitter is really cool. It's really easy to put on. It just takes a little time to dry But it looks really great and it, you don't get the mess of glitter falling all over your face Which I love and they wear really well like if you lay them quite a lot in the inner corner They can have a tendency to peel a little bit But I normally just have mine on the center of my lid and it just opens up the eye and adds a lot more glam to the look so yeah, thank you guys for tuning in and I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Bye! On how you think I could improve or, you know. <laughs> that was so scary. Shit. Oh my god, I made my heart drop. Literally, there was a massive jet, I just hear, like a jet or airplane, and just flew. It was so close to the houses over there, and the noise just, whoa. <laughs> uh, anyways. <laughs>